What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with a SketchUp quick modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to model a bridge using groups and components so that we can quickly extend the bridge and modify it and things like that. We may also use an extension at the end to add some bend to it, but let's go ahead and just jump into it and see where it goes. So I'm always looking out for things that would be interested, interesting to model in SketchUp. And one thing that I kind of happened on yesterday was a picture of a suspension bridge in Vancouver. And so this particular piece is suspended off of a rock wall, but I just like the construction of this bridge in general. Um, and uh, so I wanted to kind of model this and talk a little bit more about uh, how modeling with groups and components can make modeling something like this a little bit easier. And then we may come in and bend this after the fact, but you can find images of this on the Tourism Vancouver website. Um, this is the Capilano Suspension Bridge, so you can find this and follow along. But what I want to do in this particular case is I want to start by modeling out just the boards that are going to make up the bottom of this. And so probably the easiest way to do that is just what, what we want to do is we want to model out enough of this bridge that we have kind of an idea of the way that it um, that, that all the supports are going to repeat and things like that. And then we're just going to make multiple copies of it to extend the bridge as far as we want. So probably what I'll do is I'll just start off with probably like a four inch wide board. So I'm just going to use the rectangle tool to draw something that's four inches wide. Then I'm going to hit the comma key and I'm going to type in 50 feet. So it's 50 feet long. And so what we can do with that then is we can now take that and push pull it to whatever thickness that we want. So I'm probably gonna push pull this to one and a half and I'm actually gonna make this a little bit wider with the push pull tool. So maybe another two or possibly another four inches. So we'll figure this is gonna be about eight inches wide. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna triple click on this to select it. And I'm gonna make this a component. Making this as a a component is going to be important because we're going to make a few different copies of this. And so um, that way, if we decide to change our length or something like that, all of the other copies will change with it. So I'm just going to call this something like floor board or something that I can recognize. It doesn't really matter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some copies of this. But before I do that, I want to draw just a little line off of this edge as kind of a spacer. Um, or we could also use the dimension tool in order to do that. That's probably a cleaner way to do that. But I'm just going to draw this maybe an eighth of an inch off of here um, just because we're going to want to model these with a gap just in case we render this or something like that. But now I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode and I'm going to move this across. So move tool in copy mode, tap the M key, tap the control key, and then I'm going to click on this point. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to move this along the red axis until I intersect with my uh, my guideline here. And then what I'm going to do, because this is three boards wide, is I'm going to type in times two and hit the enter key. So that's going to create two copies instead of one. And so what we've done is we've created our base board that's going to make up our bridge. And uh, I'm going to probably move my default model out of the way for now because I might just drop it on this bridge a little bit later. And so we've got the floor of our bridge pretty much modeled out. Well, now what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to model out the supports that are going to make up the rest of the bridge. And so what I'm going to do for right now is I'm just going to draw a very simple rectangle. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle along the base here and uh, we'll go ahead and and figure this is going to be probably 12 inches wide, so something like that. So I might even come in here and just uh, create a guide that's gonna be 12 inches along here just to kind of help me place this. And I'm just gonna draw that rectangle on this face. And so I'm assuming the way this is gonna work is this is gonna be some kind of a steel plate, yeah, maybe like an inch thick or something like that. I'm not really super worried about getting the structural super detailed right now, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to push pull this so that it's only halfway across this bridge because what we're going to do is we're going to make this a component and then we'll create a mirrored copy of this. And for now, just push pull this so this is in the middle of the bridge and then we're going to push pull this out maybe another, we'll say maybe another 12 inches or something like that. So we're assuming what's going to happen is that this is going to stick out and then our support post is going to be mounted on top of this. And so for now, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to triple click on this. And I'm going to make this a component and we'll just call this base plate. So now I have my plate in here 
and I'm going to maybe create and so I'm just going to draw a rectangle on top of this and then I'm just going to offset that in. So when I offset that in, what I'm doing is I'm uh, basically modeling out the plate that's going to be in there. And then all that extra geometry that I just created by doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then I'm just going to push pull this up maybe like three quarters of an inch or something like that. So we're going to assume that's kind of our mounting plate. And you could make that a component as well if you wanted to. So maybe mounting plate could also be a component. And then we're just gonna model out our handrail that's gonna come off of this. So I'm just gonna draw maybe a line off of this edge and then I'll just create a guide that's gonna be maybe an inch this way and an inch this way. And then I can just draw a rectangle off of that that I can then use to kind of extrude up to make into my handrail. So I'm just gonna push pull this up and we're gonna assume our handrail is gonna have a height of maybe like three foot, six inches or something like that. And so the first thing we're gonna notice when we look at our bridge is that this kind of slopes backwards. So in order to kind of create that slope, what we can do is we can just select this edge and just kind of move this back just like this. So, and I'm not gonna to get too in depth about trying to match what's in there exactly. Um, probably what I'm gonna do is just kind of model out a profile in here. Maybe something like this. And then I'm just going to draw an arc across this face to kind of split this off. And I'm not sure why that's deleting that face out. We can just draw a line across this edge in order to uh, heal that back in there. But I'm just going to push pull this until it's level with this back side and that'll delete out our extra piece right there. And we can mess around a little bit more with the way this looks a little bit later. So we could do something like if we wanted to like scale it in, we could use the scale tool in uniform scaling mode or something like that. I'm not going to worry too much about that for right now. Instead, we're just going to triple click on this and right click and we're going to make this a component component and we're just going to call this handrail. So now what we have is we have our handrail and it really should be handrail support but that's okay. We've got our handrail support, we've got our mounting plate and we've got our base plate. And so I'm going to take all three of those and I'm going to make those a component and we're just going to call this um, handrail support half. So now we've got this in here as a component. Well, what we can do is we can use the move tool in copy mode to move this across. And then I'm gonna use the scale tool to flip this. So um, I'm just gonna tap the S key and then hold the control key and click and drag this until we get to negative one, just like this. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna move it back so that these two pieces are kind of together and I'm gonna put them in a component as well. So we're just gonna call this handrail support full. And so one thing that we may want to consider because we're going to take this whole bridge and repeat it is we may want to consider going ahead and instead of having this flush with the end here, we might want to think about taking our center point right here and just moving it back so that it's level with this end. Because that way if we take this and we copy it our end will sit flush on top of this. And I'll show you more of what I'm talking about in a little bit. But what I wanna do now is I wanna create some copies of this component along this piece. And so there's a couple different ways that we could do this. Um, but probably the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode again. So I'm just gonna select this whole thing. I'm gonna activate the move tool and I'm just gonna use this corner as a base point but then I'm gonna tap the control key to turn copy mode on. And I'm gonna move this along the green axis until I can click on this point. And so when I click on this point, we've created one copy. And so you don't wanna click or do anything else. What you wanna do is you wanna type in divided by and a number of copies. So in this case, I typed in divided by five and I hit the enter key. So what that did is that created five equally spaced copies from this point to this point. So one, two, three, four, five. And so what that did is that allowed us to really quickly create this bridge piece in here um, just by making copies of something that we'd already modeled. So there's a couple more things that we may wanna think about doing while we're in here. The first is I'm gonna go ahead and 
I'll leave this for now. We may end up deleting that. We'll leave it as is for right now. But what I want to do is I want to model out the fence that's going to run along this face because it's kind of like a chain link or a wire mesh. And then I also want to model out a handrail. So for the fence, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to pick this center point. And I'm just going to draw a line along the green axis to this point. And then for right now, I'm just gonna draw another line down here. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to move this down and create a copy of this over here. And then we'll just close this off by drawing a line right up here. And so what that allows us to do is that allows us to create a face. And I'm just going to right click on this face and I'm going to reverse that. And for what we're doing here, I'm just going to apply a chain link material fencing material to this object. Um, obviously, if you're trying to get super detailed, there may be some other things that you want to do in addition to this. But for right now, I think this is going to work just fine. So I'm just going to take this whole thing and I'm going to double click to select it and I'm going to make it a component. And we're just going to call this um, bridge fence. And we'll go ahead and create that copy. And then we're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy this across. And then we're going to flip it using the scale tool and we'll just move it back just like this. So now what we have is we have a bridge with our fencing material on either side. And so one thing we're kind of lacking right now is any kind of actual handrail on this. And so what we could do is there's a few different ways we could do this. We could do this where we have a rail that kind of sticks off this way or we could just draw the rail as an extruded circle on top of on top of these pieces just like this. And so if we're gonna do that, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a circle across the top of this and I'm just gonna push pull this until it's level with the middle of this piece right here. And then I'm probably gonna push pull this one as well so it's also level with the middle. And from there, you could do a lot of different things with this. You could, uh, you could make this a component and call it handrail, round, handrail, and then you could either leave this kind of embedded in the top here, you could move this up, you could move it along this face. Um, you could do a lot of different things with this. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of leave this, let's say that this is gonna be sitting off of this face just a little bit. So maybe like four inches in, maybe down, so that the very top of it is flush with the top of our railing. So what we can do is I'm going to hide this fence for a second. And if you remember, we modeled all of these as component. And so all I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to double click inside of this. And if you remember, because these are components, if I make a change in one, it's going to change all of the others as well. So probably what I'll do is I'll just create a guide along this face and I'm going to make it flush with the bottom of this object. So that way, we can come in here and we can create a little bit of a piece that's just going to kind of sit in here and retain this uh, that's going to retain this metal piece and I'm not going to get super in depth with the way this needs to look we'll call this maybe a quarter inch or something like that and we're just going to fill this in by filling in the face and we're just going to extrude it out a little bit so we'll just extrude this maybe we can call it the width of our handrail. And so what that does is that creates this retainer piece on every single one of these because they're all components. So, and we may need to do a little bit of adjustment on the ends, but I think we're in good shape for right now. And so we can go ahead and we can delete out our guide. We can go in here and we can unhide our fence. And again, we might need to adjust the way that this sits in here a little bit, um, but we can go ahead and we can make a copy of this and maybe use the move tool in copy mode to place this across here. So it's kind of flush with the center point. You might have to do some fine adjustment on that to get it where you want it to be. And so now, because of the way that we've set this up, 
what we can do if we want our bridge to be longer is we can just make a copy of it. So what I would do is I would delete out this end piece and then we would just select our whole bridge and we would just use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this. And you could make this a component or not. It's not really that big of a deal either way because everything inside of it is a component. And getting this lined up is getting a little bit tricky. So we'll just come in here and do this from the other side. But you can see how you could use this to make this bridge as long as you wanted it to be. And so for this particular application, one thing we might consider is because the image showed this getting wrapped basically around 180 degrees. Oh, and one thing I didn't do, which I should have done before I did that, is you wanna take this whole thing and you wanna put it in a group. So we'll put it in a group. And then align it right there. And so one other thing we might wanna do is we might wanna bend this along a curve. And there's a couple different ways to do that using extensions. So probably the best way to do that is to use the extension True Bend by TomTom. Tom. And so what that's gonna ask us to do is that's gonna ask us to ask us to create a single group or component. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna select all of this, right click and click Make Group. And then I'm just gonna click on this right here and you can see how this is going to bend our bridge, but not necessarily in the way that we want it bent. Um, so I don't want it to bend that way. And so for whatever reason, things in SketchUp like to be on the red axis when you're trying to bend them with extensions like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this and I'm going to go inside the group and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'll click back out of this and we'll try this again. So I'm just going to activate True Bend. And that's gonna allow me to take this and I'm gonna type in a value of 180 degrees and I'm gonna hit the enter key. And that's gonna bend my bridge 180 degrees along this curve. So that should give you a pretty good idea of some of the good practices you should use when you're doing something like this. Probably the biggest thing I wanna focus on from this video is you always wanna make those groups and components because that's gonna make changes easy. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.